Hi! This table saw is just a wonderful machine. It's heavy, it's accurate, 5.5 horsepower, nothing rattles, nothing vibrates. It's just wonderful in almost every way. There are only two things that bother me. One of them we're going to address today and the other, I don't know, maybe next week, maybe never. Who knows? And the problem is, where was I? Um, the problem is that if I want to convert this into a rip saw, which is the normal um, configuration, I need to take off this crosscut fence. And in order to do that, I need to use this custom wrench that I custom made. And it's a real hassle. So I need to open those star knobs and I suppose that they were made for human hands, but they look like something straight out of uh, Mordor, to be honest, Mordor of the Lord of the Rings. <coughs> and now that these are open, I need to open them all the way. Do, 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 do. This one and then this one. And then I can lift the fence off of the table and this is like, I don't know, maybe 20 pounds or something and store it away. Okay. Yeah. And now I can fold down the table. Oh, shit. Wrong position. Where, where is the mark? There it is. Here we go. And everything's neatly tucked away, except for those things that are still sticking out. And I even got snagged a couple of times with my trousers. And this is just, this is just annoying, really. I need to, I don't know, get rid of those. And now if I want to rip a big piece of sheet good against the fence and use the side table just as a side support wing, I can't do that because those things are sticking out. I mean, this one is easy enough to remove. You can just pull it out. But in order to remove this one, you need to get a wrench and get in there from underneath. And that is just not feasible. And then if I want to make cross cuts again, I need to lift the fence back onto the saw, get it in here, then tighten those, those special knobs and the problem is there isn't really a, a 90 degree reference point on this table. I mean technically it has a bolt here that I can adjust and that should stop it but that is really unreliable and not very accurate. So what I resorted to do is to get my square and square the fence off against the miter slot like this and then fiddle around here, oh, get it just right and then tighten down the knobs all the way. And this is a really bad knuckle busting affair here. Okay, and now it's on there. It only took me about, I don't know, two minutes or something. Yeah, not really, but you know where I'm going with this. So what I needed to do is come up with an alternative solution to this crosscut fence that is lightweight. I mean, relatively speaking, lightweight compared to this thing that is 90 degree indexable that is quick detach and also quick reinstall and that detaches without leaving anything sticking out of the table surface. Anything else? Yes, it needed to have a 
scale on it with a flip up stop like this one but with a scale and it needed to be zero clearance to the blade that's all and that's exactly what I did and let me show you what I came up with So this new fence is made out of aluminium and birch plywood. It can of course pivot to a little more than 45 degrees and it locks down to the table with those two levers. I used an aluminium extrusion sold by Craig and this is actually quite beefy. Not super cheap but in my opinion well worth it. I also got the matching flip up stop block. This also works really well. It's not super rigid, but it will not move just by butting up a workpiece against it. I especially like the scale and the pointer. They are really easy to read. The fence can of course be tilted a little more than 45 degrees forward. It has a flip up 90 degree reference stop. This is spring loaded with a very strong spring so it will always stay tight. One turn on the adjustment screw is about a tenth of a degree. This is not a hard stop, it's just a reference point. So you need to be a little bit careful and not yank the fence into position. I didn't have to drill a hole in the casting, the hole was there before. Possibly for this very purpose. Let's take a look at the two locking mechanisms. This one is a T-bolt made from a carriage bolt that rides in this slot. It has a wooden sleeve which prevents it from turning in the slot. I can disassemble it real quick so we can take a closer look. The sleeve is made out of some really hard beech wood. It keeps the bolt from turning in the slot. However, when the bolt and the table underside are in full contact, friction actually takes the entire torque load, which means that the wooden sleeve doesn't really have to resist a lot of torque. The little brass pin is just there to keep the bolt aligned when the fence is not installed, so that the fence will always just drop right into place without me having to fiddle the bolt into the right orientation. In order to take a closer look at the other locking mechanism, we need to remove the aluminium extrusion. It's just a block with two steel pins sticking out and a cam lever. Down there is a piece of copper sheet metal as a rub plate for the cam lever. This works the same way as a workbench hold down, just a cylinder in a hole. And when a force trying to pull out the cylinder is applied far enough from the longitudinal axis of the cylinder, it will be locked in the hole by friction. And the greater the force that's applied, the greater the friction and the cylinder will not move. Unless something breaks of course. It's self-locking, just like the bar of a bar clamp. And the steel cylinder locks into the cast iron of the table and not into the plywood of the fence because the fit is much tighter to the cast iron and the wood is of course much softer. The wood gets pressed out of the way and allows the cylinder to lock to the cast iron. And lock the fence down with it. It's actually pretty simple. The last feature is the movable zero clearance pad. When the sacrificial part is damaged or cut away, for example by a wider blade, this can be moved in towards the blade a couple of times, 
and when it's completely spent I can remove those two screws and replace it with a fresh strip of 9mm birch plywood. So let's find out if this will actually make a difference concerning the setup time. Um, I'm gonna take the fence off of the saw, put it down here, get up, get the fence again and reinstall it to 90 degrees. And I will time that on my phone. Okay, let's go. Okay, 19 seconds. Let's see how the old one does. <coughs> and the old one. Go! Fifty five seconds. So I think I've met my goals pretty well with this, which was to be expected, of course. <laughs> But I've cut the setup time more than in half and I've also cut the weight more than in half and it's also much more user friendly now. Bye!